Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. Heated patios, walkways, can you do it? Absolutely. Is it efficient? I don't know, I don't know. Is it awesome? Absolutely. So here's how we persuade Big Steve to show up on our job sites. We tell him that we have big toys up here to run and he's more than happy to show up for us. So right here, there's my drawing. This is going to be driveway here. This is going to be walkway slash driveway. And this is walkway. So we're heating this area in that area. That way you don't have to clean off the snow. Base preparation is exactly the same as always. The only difference is I do have some videos on base prep. So when I say as always, go watch those and you'll know about patio base, but that's what we're not what we're talking about today. The only difference is I have to dig a little deeper because typically I leave three inches here, two inches of pavers and an inch of setting bed. In this scenario, I'm gonna leave four and a half, which will leave room for me to put all of my stuff down before I screed my setting bed on top. So that way I'll still come in the exact same height that I need to. So once the base is put in, I'll use this is from Ecofoil. It's just, it's a reflective barrier to keep my heat from going down into the ground. I want it to go up and melt the snow. Don't use anything that has like air bubbles in or compresses or because yeah, as you can imagine, that causes trouble with sedlage and all kinds of screwy stuff happens. So we use a thin foil, reflective foil. So we roll this out and when we're done with that, we put down this, uh, it's a wire mesh. It'll hold down my foil temporarily. And it also allows we then coil um, half inch uh, PEX heating pipe and on top of this and fasten it to this wire mesh. And then once that's down, we'll just screed our normal setting bed on top of there, which is going to be a little thicker than standard, obviously, because we're covering all of this, which means that edging, uh, you're gonna have to use a different kind of edging because instead of having an inch of setting bed, you're gonna have probably three inches of setting bed, which doesn't cause a problem. Uh, we've done this before on a couple of different projects, but you just have to um, use like a concrete, a reinforced concrete edging, like perma edge or something like that. So in this case, we'd barely have to do any edging because everything's locked in to walkway, driveway, house. All right, so we're gonna roll this out, put down our wire, Tomorrow the plumber comes. I don't, I'm not really a heating, cooling guy. We did run one inch packs out here from the boiler in the house. Uh, and a manifold box is gonna go in here. Gonna run these two one inch lines into here and then run um, half inch packs from there to coil on top. And I think the plumber said that they're like, they don't run water through it. It's like 90% antifreeze or something. It won't freeze and stuff. And there's a sensor mounted out here that when it like senses a snowflake or senses snowfall, then it turns it on. So it's not like it's running all winter. I'm not very knowledgeable on all the plumber things. I just know how to put in this stuff. <laughs> but in the meantime, let's start prepping for him. Hey folks, final steps of the heated uh, driveway here. While we were gone this weekend, the plumber put in half inch heating lines. Hey, he just laid it on top of here, coated it around there and zip tied it all down nice and tight so it lies flat. 
And this morning, AJ and I are setting our screed poles out across here. And we have about a half an inch extra room on top of everything, which is really nice because if you get this too high, it's a real pain in the neck because the heating lines want to pop out of your setting bed and it's a real fiasco. But I have like a half inch space on top of the heating lines. Like I said, I figured four and a half inches from the base up to the top to get this to where we need to go. Now the final result there is all, all screeded out nice and level and we're ready to lay pavers. Do you want to be careful what kind of setting bed you're using because if you're using the wrong stuff with a four and a half inches of setting material, it can settle. Um, we use a washed clean stone. It's called a number nine or a quarter inch clean stone. And it does very little saddleage even with four and a half. So I have a two and three eighth inch paver. I'm figuring for two inches. So it'll settle about three eighths of an inch and come in perfectly flush everywhere. Um, if you're using sand or stone dust, it's probably gonna settle more. I don't know how much. So I'm, I'm not familiar with that. But if you're using a clean stone, a quarter inch clean stone or a 1B clean stone or a number nine clean stone, that's not gonna saddle very much. With a two and three eighth inch paver, you should be good to figure two inches, three eighth of an inch of saddleage across there after you run your vibro plate across. Now, before we screeded this setting material, the plumber pressurized these lines because they do expand a little bit and I didn't want to do that after. So as you can see, he has it pressurized to like 60 PSI. So these lines are pressurized. That way they'll expand a little bit and they're not gonna move after that. This is where the manifold's coming in. This, these are the feeds coming from the boiler and we're gonna put a box in right here for all the plumbing lines. That way you can access the valves and everything out here. So there we go. Pretty, it's actually pretty easy, probably. The install cost isn't much higher. There's more, it's gonna be higher obviously because there's plumbing and stuff, but it's actually not that in such a, an intense process to make it heated. It just, it costs a good bit to heat it once it's snowing. We're gonna screed this out and hopefully get it laid in today.